Hello, this is the lecture for managerial accounting for chapter 7, which is cost volume profit analysis. And the exciting thing about this chapter is we move a little bit away from a manufacturing type of business into a tool you can use with any type of business. So the first objective is to calculate the unit contribution margin and the contribution margin ratio. CVP analysis is definitely a powerful tool to help managers. It is a relationship among cost, volume, and profit. So when you think about where you can use this, it's endless. It determines how much the company must sell each month just to cover cost or break even, which is really important in um, overall decision making. And it helps managers decide how sales volume would need to change to achieve a profit. And speaking as a CFO, what I always find interesting with managers is you know, people come up with great ideas and, and they think it's profitable, but when you really lay out CVP analysis for managers and they can see where their break-even point is, it's, it's eye-opening. CVP analysis relies on the interdependency of five components, as you see here. Sales price per unit, volume sold, variable cost per unit, fixed cost, and operating income. The assumptions are there are no volume discounts, costs are linear, revenues are linear, inventory levels will not change, and sales mix will not change. So these are your assumptions when you do this analysis. Um, here's an example of facts. Let's make up a company called Kay's Posters. Kay has an e-tail poster business. She currently sells a poster for $35. While each poster has a variable cost of $21, Kay has fixed costs of $7,000, and she is currently selling 550 posters. So. Your contribution margin statement is your case e-tail poster example from the prior slide says sales revenue, 550, less your variable expenses, this is the unit cost times the 550, and the sales revenue times the 550, gives you your contribution margin. Then you take out your fixed expenses, and you can see that your operating income is $700 when you sell 550 posters based on the assumptions on the previous slide. So if your sales price per unit less your variable cost per unit is a contribution margin per unit of 14. Now assume sales are 650. You can take your contribution margin, which is 14, times your 650, back out your fixed cost, and you get an operating income of 2100. So this is a powerful tool and example to show you how easy it is to calculate the um, under new units to do some variance analysis. The contribution mar margin ratio is the percentage of each sales dollar that is available for covering fixed expenses and generating a profit. So it's your unit contribution margin divided by your sales price per unit. So this makes sense because here's that $14 divided by the sales price, which means your profit is 40%. That's what this is telling you right here, or your contribution, I'm sorry, is 40%. Here you get your contribution margin divided by your sales revenue, and your contribution margin ratio can be calculated here the same way, and it's still 40%. So this is proving to you that, that um, these calculations work based on the assumptions as provided. Let's look at S7-1 from your book. Look at what's provided in your book, and it's asking you what is the contribution margin per passenger. So here's a different example of a service industry with passengers. You have sales revenue of 120 per passenger, a variable expense of 48, and a contribution margin per passenger of 72. Now it says what's the contribution margin ratio? Well, you take the 72 divided by the 120, and that's 60%. Part C says use the unit contribution margin to project operating income if the monthly sales are 10,000 passengers. So you take your 10,000 times 72, which is from up here, is 720 minus your fixed cost given in the book is 450. Now it asks use the contribution margin ratio to project operating income if monthly sales are 650. So you take your contribution margin, 650 times of sales, 650,000 of sales times the 60%, gives you contribution margin, less fixed cost is operating income. So these are tools to show managers without having to make them accountants. You lay these kinds of things out on a monthly basis, every month you update it or quarterly or however you do, and they, see, they can see the trends without needing to understand and be an accountant. 
If you look at S7-2, this is a luxury cruise line, sells an additional 300 tickets. And it wants to know by what amount will its operating income increase. If the contribution margin per unit times the additional tickets, so you take the 300 tickets times the 72 is 21,600. Let's talk about objective two. Use CVP analysis to find break-even points, because that's really what you want to know. Where do you break even and where do you make a profit? Break-even point is the sales level at which operating income is zero. If you're not breaking even, then there's no point truly in producing that product or having that sale from a basic black and white standpoint. However, we'll talk a little bit about product mix or service mix and where sometimes as, as a servicer you provide different services and as long as overall you break even and make a profit, you're okay. At sell, um, if sales above break even, then you have a profit. If it's below, then you have a loss. Fixed expenses equal total contribution. So all these are ways to talk about break even. Total sales equals total expenses. So let's go ahead and take the unit sold equals the fixed expense plus the operating income divided by the contribution margin. That is break even point in units. Unit sold is 7,000 plus zero. So here, look up here, fixed expenses plus operating income. So you have your 7,000 fixed expenses with no operating income divided by your contribution margin per unit is 500 posters. So we're back to Kay's poster example here. So you need to sell 500 posters to break even. Using the contribution margin to create break even point in dollars, same, same thing, only using money instead of units. So you take your fixed expenses plus your operating income divided by the contribution margin ratio and you get $17,500. That's your break even point in sales dollars. Finding uh, volume needed for target profit using contribution margin. Units to be sold equals fixed expenses plus operating income divided by contribution margin per unit. Units to be sold equals 7,000 plus 4,900 because those are the, and you can flip back through these slides to, to go back and see where these numbers came from, but we proved them in a previous part of the, um, the video here. Divided by the 14 unit contribution margin comes up with 850 posters. Okay, so if you have a target profit, which companies set targets and metrics, so if this, if this company had a target of the um, fixed expenses and the op plus the operating income to give you a total certain profit, that would be 850 posters given the assumptions that we have in this problem. So 850 posters times 35 is 29,750 in sales needed to achieve target prop profit. Finding the volume needed for a target profit, CVP analysis helps managers determine what they need to sell to earn a target amount of profit. Most managers know what they're, they're most intimate with their sales of service or product. So it, this is the language that is, speaks volumes to them. So your sales needed is your fixed expense plus your target operating income divided by your contribution margin ratio. So there's that 7,000 plus the 4,900 divided by the 40% and you get 29750 Okay, let's try it on your own. S7-3, break-even number of passengers. There's your equation. So the units to be sold, given the information in, in the problem. It's doing the math for you. 3,750 passengers. So go back to S712 and then do three. After you watch this video, make sure you can do this on your own. This is a very simple problem, but it uses all of the um, topics in this objective. Then it says the sales revenue needed to break even is the units times the sales price. There it is in dollars. And alternatively, if you follow the equation provided before, you get the 270 plus the operating income at zero divided by the 60% is 450. Graphing the CVP relationship, graphs are very um, dynamic to show managers. You choose a sales volume, plot the point, draw the sales revenue, and then this is what it looks like. So you have your dollars and your units and you plot them and then there you see the little dot in the middle. Then you prepare a CVB chart, draw the fixed cost line, 
there it is right there there's those fixed costs so at the point that the volume crosses over the the revenue I'm sorry crosses over that fixed point then you're making a profit so this is a visual that's very helpful to managers here's another look where you have total cost revenue and fixed costs so as you can see um, where they all cross where revenue crosses fixed costs, costs and where revenue co um, crosses total costs, then you have true profit at that point. Here's the break-even point right there. Okay, so hopefully this is a visual slide that helps you see it. Um, this is a great slide. Here you have operating loss, here you have operating income, and there's your break-even point. I'd print this one out because this is really a good visual. Objective three is performing sensitivity analysis analysis okay all managers um, that work in industries where they have any type of sales are really concerned with um, the dynamics of a changing industry so managers need to be prepared and that's why they need sensitivity analysis it's a what if that's another way to call it um, this is a nice new buzzword sensitivity but in my world where I came from we always call it what if what if the sales price changes what if costs change what if the sales mix changes and what if what if there's tons of what ifs the contribution margin will change if the sale price changes. The break-even point will change. What if variable costs change? The contribution margin will change. The break-even point will change. What if fixed costs change? No effect on the contribution margin because the fixed costs are fixed. Will change the break-even point. Okay. Sustainability and the CVP. Reducing costs and helping the environment. For example, um, remember, we're talking what if here. So we're talking what if we reduce cost to, and help the environment. For example, decreasing use of plastic in bottles reduces variable cost. Decreasing variable cost makes it easier to reach a target profit. Let's talk about break even and target profit. Here's a nice example. It's from Exhibit 7 8 in your book. Here's your regular posters and large posters, the variable cost and the sales, and the contribution margin per unit. And here's your mix. Notice sales mix is a term that is used to decide. Remember I was talking earlier about maybe one product might be a profit and might, one might be a loss, but overall the product line is profitable. Here's your mix right here. So here's your contribution margin for a product mix. Weighted average contribution margin per unit, the 160 divided by the 8 is the 20. So you have 70 and 90 is 160 and then you divide it by the 8 and you get 20. So notice this 20 should fall between the 14 and the 30. That's how to gut you check yourself when you're doing your homework on something like this. If this number falls way outside, you know you've made a mistake. Multi-product firm example fixed. It's the same it's the same formula only you're using the weighted average contribution margin. So here you got the same 7,000 with the 20 instead of the individual numbers. So you get your 350 posters. Break-even sales is 350 times 5 eighths, 350 times 3 eighths, and there you get your, your different um, examples. So let's look at 7-9. Assuming the luxury cruise line expect, expects to sell four regular cruises and, you know, some executive cruises. Here's your sales mix of the regular and the executive. There's your variable cost for each. There's your contribution margin per each. There's your sales mix, there's your contribution margin, there's your weighted average contribution margin. So these are really cool examples to do in Excel um, if, if you've got the time when you're studying because you can just set the little formulas up and run the numbers and just get used to how they change based on the facts of the, of the problems. And 710. Run through this one on your own after you watch the video. Same, um, this time they're asking for, the, they show you the sales and units and you come up with the tickets. So make sure you can calculate this on your own. So go back after you're done watching this and do all of these little S problems before you start your homework. Okay, here's a big one, E7-28A. I'm going to go through it pretty quick just so you can see it and then you can try it on your own. Calculate the weighted average contribution margin of a twig and an oak. They give you all the information, it comes down and it's 18 here, the weight, the margin per unit is 18. And the second part of it says calculate the break-even point in units. Here's your equation, here's the actual calculation, 
And then in step three, it says calculate the break-even point units for the product line. There's the twig. There's the oak. And that's um, moving on to objective five. I ran through that quickly on purpose just so that you would see it, so that you could uh, um, print it out and try it on your own. Now you want to determine a firm's margin of safety and operating leverage. Margin of safety, these are indicators of risk, is the excess of expected sales over break even. And operating leverage is the relative amount of fixed and variable costs that make up a company's total cost. The margin of safety is the excess of expected sales over break-even sales. Okay, safety, think profit, safety and profit. That makes sense. Drop in sales that a company can absorb before occurring a loss. So it's that cushion. I like to call it cushion. <laughs> Used to evaluate the risk of current operations as well as the risk of new plans. So there's all ways to talk about margin of safety. Here's an example. Here's your expected sales in units and your break-even sales in units. And then here's your margin of safety in dollars. Here's your expected sales minus your break-even sales is your expected um, cushion. I call it cushion. So you have this cushion here. And here it is as a percentage. Margin of safety in units divided by expected sales in units gives you a 47.4% cushion. And then here it is in dollars. And it should be the same. Okay, so it depends on the problem. Some problems are going to give you dollars and some are going to give you units and it's the same calculation. So do S713, kind of check it out on your own. Here's your cushion, 400 units, $12,400. And here it is right here, 40%. Operating leverage factor is how responsive a company's operating income is to change in volume. Okay, now we're talking volume. Lowest possible value for this factor is one if the company has no fixed costs, which is just not, you know, it's not usual. The operating leverage factor is the contribution margin divided by the operating income. So here it is, the operating leverage factor at one. Operating leverage factor changed in, in fixed cost. How responsive is a company's operating income to changes in volume? Lowest possible value for this factor is 1 if the company has no fixed cost. So the operating leverage factor is the contribution margin divided by the operating income. And here it is in this problem, 2.11 rounded. There's your operating leverage factor. High operating leverage is companies have high operating leverage, higher levels of fixed cost and lower levels of variable cost, higher contribution margin ratios, higher risk. Okay, you see that? Higher potential for reward. Low operating leverage. Low operating leverage companies have high levels of variable cost and low levels of fixed cost, lower contribution margin. And for low operating leverage companies, changes in volume do not have a significant effect on the operating income, so they face lower risk, lower potential for reward. Examples include merchandising companies. So make sure you understand this as you're working the problems. That's why it's all spelled out like this for you. S7-14 shows you the contribution margin, the fixed expenses, there's that operating income. Your contribution margin divided by your operating income is 2.5. So if volume increased 10%, the operating income will increase 25%. That's how you read this. 2.5 is a factor multiplied by 10. Okay, so these are the terms managers like to work in. They don't want to see the number crunching. They, they want this kind of verbiage. Here's another one. Here's your proof. Here's your posters times your vol plus your increased volume times your contribution margin is your 11,000 less your fixed expense is your operating income of five. Your operating income before the change in volume was four. There's your thousand dollars. The six divided by the 2400 is 25%. There's your proof right there that this works, and I'm not making it up. And that's the end of the chapter. So once again, um, i just like to say this is a really good chapter for more than just merchandising companies. It's used in service line companies. Um, I've used it in healthcare to value out service lines. So pay attention when you're doing the homework, and if you have any questions, send me an email. Thanks.